Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Coin News Extra Interview Session, a very beautiful program where we invite innovators, educators, and influencers in the blockchain, fintech, and cryptocurrency space to come at their point and matters arising. So today we'll be talking about blockchain for business growth and transformation. And I have with me a great innovator and educator, Brian Doughty, who is joining us from the United States. Brian, you are welcome. Thanks for having me, Lee. I really appreciate it. Really uh, look forward to having this conversation with you. Yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Brian is a technical outreach uh, specialist at Bitcoin Association. So we are happy to have him today. I will be looking towards uh, this interesting topic, blockchain for business growth and transformation. You know, when you talk about blockchain, a lot of things come to people's mind, most especially cryptocurrency. So we're going to be looking at how you can transform businesses and transform uh, and business growth and how it can expedite that process. So before we move to that, I would like to know, get your background and brief about you, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the technology field for 20 plus years uh, in enterprise sales, IT sales, so hardware, software, and managed services. Worked with a myriad of industries and, and verticals, um, just helping them improve their efficiency, lower their costs with technologies. I've uh, been a huge advocate of, you know, integrating emerging technologies, which has kind of led me to blockchain technology back in 2016, 2017. And from there, you know, I, as I was a um, enterprise uh, con sales consultant, I, you know, just kind of started getting this feeling as if, you know, some of the recommendations I was making to some of the customers, um, you know, that blockchain would actually be a much better fit in the future or even immediately. So it was one of those things that I sort of saw the writing on the wall to where I wanted to, you know, pivot out of just legacy hardware sales and service to more uh, to something that's more blockchain related. And, you know, ultimately, you know, um, was brought on by the Bitcoin Association to kind of lead their uh, outreach here in, the, in North America. Interesting. You've been uh, long in the ecosystem, at least uh, coming at that early 2016 is a very good one. So looking at when we talk about uh, blockchain for business growth and transformation, what role do you think blockchain can play in business growth and transformation? Oh, I think it has a humongous role here in the future. Um, there's some significant impact that, that it, blockchain technology can have on efficiencies, on cost, on capabilities, and that's across all you know verticals and in, and uh, industries. And you know this goes across everything from transparency, fraud prevention, you know accountability, increasing the trust. Um, just the clear data ownership and integrity. The, and one of the other things that I think people overlook on or overlook is the privacy and security aspect of what blockchain can do for businesses. You know, recently we had this solar winds impact or solar winds hack that impacted, you know, 18,000 plus customers and may have, you know, a cost that you actually couldn't put a figure on as far as how much damage and it did down the line, where blockchain actually has the capability to mitigate some of these, you know, cybersecurity risks that are prevalent today. And I think that as time goes on, we'll start to see, um, you know, how, how Bitcoin or how blockchain starts to integrate very closely with, you know, today's TCP IP and, you know, the way that data will be, um, used as a platform. So to mon be able to monetize data, collect data, analyze data, I think that this is going to be something that is revolutionary for every type of business involved. Interesting. So we're looking at, you know, uh, you are a technical outreach specialist at uh, Bitcoin Association. And we, if when you look at uh, Bitcoin Association, uh, it's working on advancing business on Bitcoin as the blockchain. How does he achieve that? 
Yeah, so we actually bring together a lot of different enterprises, startups, developers, merchants, um, all the exchanges and service providers, kind of bring them in and provide, you know, the support and resources for all of them to integrate, co-op, you know, the coopetition aspect of, of building a, a brand new industry. And, you know, we support the original Bitcoin protocol where, you know, um, we were advocating for the stability of the protocol where, you know, business can, businesses can actually develop on it to where developers aren't always changing, you know, the code every six months. So that way there's not a sandbox that they're building on, but a solid foundation. And then we also advocate obviously for the scalability effort. And, you know, one thing that kind of separates, you know, the blockchain from, cryptocurrencies right now is scaling, you know, when you kind of take in consideration, you know, some of these other blockchains such as, you know, BTC, Bitcoin, or Ethereum, where the fees are extremely high, you know, I think I was looking the other day and an Ethereum cost is $9 per transaction, you know, for gas fees, where Bitcoin BTC is, you know, somewhere around the $9 to $10 range. When you really start to think about this as an innovative technology, you know, you really have to think of how is it going to to lower the cost and and make a company more efficient. And if the costs are much more than the legacy technology that they're using today, then, you know, obviously it is an, um, an innovative solution for an enterprise right now. So, you know, through the Bitcoin Association, Enchain, um, and a, a lot of other groups within the BSV ecosystem, you know, there's been a lot of um, focus on making sure that we can scale because that's the key to unlocking this utility for blockchain enterprises. So with Bitcoin SV, we've been able to actually, you know, scale unbounded. Um, we're just coming up on the one year anniversary of the Genesis upgrade which allowed us to remove these limits to allow miners and transaction processors to, to you know, mine larger blocks, right, of full transactions. Back in May of 2020, we had a record-breaking block of 369 megabits, right, that had 1.3 million transactions in it. And when you start to look at, um, you know, the efficiency aspect, the fees because of that scaling actually go down to less than one one hundredth of a penny. So when you start to look at technology, and this is what excites me the most, because we can sit here and we can say, geez, it'd be great to send a million dollars around the world instantly. We can actually do that with today's technology. It might cost us something. And you could do that with Bitcoin, right? But imagine being able to send one penny around the world. Now, that is something that's truly innovative, because when you look at, you know, um, emerging countries where, you know, you might only have four or five dollars a month, right? If you weren't even able to send one transaction, you'd have to wait two months just to save, you know, all the money you can to send one transaction. That, That doesn't really help, you know, people that are unbanked or don't have access to the current financial system. And it doesn't bring them into the fold of, you know, uh, of an economy. So I think with, you know, the scaling and the low fees of Bitcoin SV, going back to that original protocol that, you know, can scale to meet the world's data management and, and processing platforms, you know, I think that we'll find here in the future where, you know, the subsidy is lowering on Bitcoin every few years and Ethereum hasn't really figured out how to scale that as that subsidy goes down, the fees need to replace that for the transaction miners to actually, you know, make money. And if they're not, that they're either going to close shop or find a way, you know, that they're that their investment into their, you know, industry is going to pay off some return on investment. So, you know, as I, as I mentioned, I think the scaling aspect is the most important as we look forward because that does offer the ability for blockchain to be integrated into these enterprises with a low cost, with all these efficiencies and, and um, you know, new capabilities that would, you know, totally change their models.
Okay, okay. Uh, Brian, uh, let me cut you short a bit there. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, look, uh, talking about that, you made mention about uh, transaction fees, uh, yes, about Ethereum and some other things. I want us to look uh, towards this direction. Are there some, I know you mentioned that, are there some other limitations associated with blockchain application for business groups? And what are these uh, limitations? So, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last question. I said, are there some limitations associated with blockchain application for business growth? If there is any, what are those uh, limitations? Oh, okay, yeah. So the limitations are really just the imagination. You know, because that we have a, a, a sound, stable platform that you can build upon and that you do have these low fees and unbounded scaling, that, you know, you're really just limited by your imagination at that point. So, you know, in the Bitcoin SV ecosystem, we have a lot of different entities, enterprise entities that are looking at this technology and beginning to integrate it, not just replacing legacy technology, but creating new, you know, business models with microtransactions and nano transactions. So, you know, just to give you an example, we have uh, EHR data, which is a healthcare data exchange that's looking to, you know, um, lower the costs and remove the data silos from healthcare records to, you know, to fight the opioid epidemic, which, you know, is pretty prevalent here in the United States where, you know, um, different people can go and doctor shop for, for prescriptions. So, you know, they're using the uh, BSV blockchain to, you know, to, to store these records and share them and, and uh, increase that level of trust among untrusted parties. And then you have other companies like Omniscape XR that's, you know, basically took uh, augmented reality and virtual reality and blended them and into blockchain and now you have the ability to, you know, have a financial aspect behind, say, an AR token that you see through your phone. You can click on that and say you get, you know, um, either a, a microtransaction for finding something or maybe it's a coupon for some digital advertising. And then, you know, more importantly, I think the data management platform aspect of Bitcoin is really overlooked. So we have companies like Unisot that do seafood chain that basically uh, allow you to track and trace halibut from, you know, the sea to your plate and Veridat that does research integrity and data auth auth uh, authenticity. And then as we get into this extreme data environment that we're moving from the big data environment where we have all these IoT devices and sensors, you know, we have these companies like Metastream and Geospock that, you know, collect this IoT sensor data, put it on chain, and then allow people to monetize that data or authenticate authenticate that data in the future, you know, where we're talking about climate change, a company like Weather SV that puts this everyday climate data on chain, well, later on, somebody can go back and authenticate rather than, you know, and work from that basis of authenticated information, rather than, you know, just throwing a bunch of different values that people can't agree on, or that there's no, you know, provenance where that information came. And then, you know, I, obviously iGaming and esports are really huge, you know, just in the legacy world, but even more so on Bitcoin. Um, I think with Bitcoin SV, because of the unbounded scaling, the removal of the limitations, you know, it really fits the iGaming uh, industry perfectly like they could adopt it today and you know reduce a great amount of cost whether that's you know for the producers for the remote gaming server that they no longer need whether it's the media transactions for every you know every time they pull a wheel or play a, a game you know everybody would instantly get paid then um, and then just as a rail, right? I mean, transaction processing is costly. So if you're able to send a transaction for less than, you know, a hundredth of a penny, now you can start to do really cool, innovative things with data. And whether that's recording every type of esports, you know, um, 
match so that way you can go back and authenticate that nobody cheated especially where there's a lot of money in play on these um, new esports programs so a company like chronoverse that's developing these type of uh, gaming systems these new age gaming systems that are blockchain based or peer game or any of these other ones in in the bsv ecosystem we have well over, you know, 400 different applications that, you know, range from, you know, um, email applications to, you know, ed, you know, learning applications. And I, I, you know, you know, just to go back on to the education piece of it, there are, you know, at least four or five different platforms that anybody can go in and begin to learn how to develop these applications on. And, you know, it's, especially with, Bitcoin SV to where we have these uh, application layer protocols that you can build on top of very easily using very unique uh, meta net protocol structures. So limitations are only by your own imagination. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been an amazing time out with you, uh, Brian Darty, who is the technical outreach specialist at Bitcoin Association. And lastly, before we draw the curtain on today's episode of Coin News Extra Interview, I would like to get your closing remark, Brian. What's that? I'm sorry. Your closing remarks. Oh, my closing remarks. You know, I would advocate for anybody to read the white paper, right? That's the that's the key first. So read the white paper. And then, you know, I think it's very important for people, whether you're an individual a developer, whether you're, a, you know, an entrepreneur, or even somebody that works within the enterprise IT world today, to understand this technology. And I think that there's opportunities with the BSV Academy that's free to, um, to, to, basically take the course. There's three different courses that they offer. Uh, the first one is on Bitcoin theory on the white paper. Um, there's, uh, like I said, the massive online course at Saxion University that's free to take. Any of these, these educative efforts, I would seize the opportunity to learn more and, you know, authenticate the data from yourself based on, you know, um, based on the white paper and the, the technical information that's out there available for the different tokens and, and blockchains and really start to look at which ones are able to scale, which ones are able to really change these types of legacy systems and create new business models. Thank and you very much. To, okay. Yeah, and don't join the Bitcoin in, um, you know, BitcoinAssociation.net. We have all sorts of different programs um, and there's all sorts of ways for anybody to get involved, including on these, you know, technical standards committee to help develop these, you know, standards globally. Thank you very much, Brian, for joining us today. And thank you, Leah. I appreciate the time and uh, thank you for having me on today. It's our pleasure.